I am Stella Vargo Rosenle Ivanez, Princess of the Kingdom of the White Falcon. Hello, hello. Let's talk about Stella, the light hero and one of the first characters or main character meets in the game. So Stella is a light hero and she has some usage in arena. Um, PvE, you cannot really say that she is uh, stable. If you want to use her, you can, but her fragile body is a real pain in that case. So without further ado, let's talk about everything she has. Though. So if we look at the base stats of Stella, it becomes pretty clear that her biggest selling point is the high speed of 154. Her attack is average, her defense is not high, alt is average, evasion is kinda high and the rest is again not really really good. So if you want to build Stella you definitely want to build her as a cleaver as someone who goes the first turn and for that you will need as much speed, crit chance, crit damage and attack you can get. With speed being the most important start. Now, let's talk about her skills. Her S1 is Fair Condemnation. It attacks two enemies, the target and the enemy with the highest speed. It has a 70% chance. On the highest level it has a 80% chance. To reduce the target's priority by 20%. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster speed. So keep in mind her uh, damage is not so high on all abilities. Her S3 has good damage but it's her ultimate so you expect it and it's single target. Uh, the biggest selling point of uh, S1 are for one, it attacks two enemies and it can apply a priority decrease on both with a really really good chance. And second, it's also her burst. So if you look at her burst, uh, burst level one makes it attack all enemies and increase the damage, two increase damage, and burst three change to enhance skill penetration, penetration increased. So her S1 is extremely stacked and it's really really good. Problem is that she will trigger Demiurge, Stella, Tio, Tayo and what's her name? <laughs> yeah, she will trigger herself. Of course she will. Because now let's talk about the S2. The S2, Steely Out, or, or however you pronounce that, passive effect cannot be inflicted with stunned, frozen or petrified. Prepares the revenge effect for every cooldown cycle of the skill. The cooldown cycle is one turn. It's the same for Demiurge Stella. If it triggers, it takes all enemies and reduces the duration of all debuffs inflicted on allies by two turns when revenge is activated. This skill deals damage proportional to the caster speed. So this is the revenge version from um, Demiurge Stella. This is the original version of course and it's actually weaker than Demiurge Stella one. I feel like it deals less damage. It might be because you try to get as much speed off as you can on Stella and so you lose on regular damage. Um, but being immune to stun force and petrified is already a really good thing. You get triggered by a lot of stuff in Arena and it's the passive effect, right? And okay, it's only has a passive effect in this case. Um, this, this kills its damage proportion to the caster speed. Don't overthink it. Her damage is not so high that it will get crazy with speed. It's just a bonus. It's just a setup, basically. You, they force you to go speed. And reduction of all debuffs inflicted on Alice is really, really amazing. Yeah, keep that in mind. But most of the time, actually, you don't have debuffs. But the first time they debuff you, it will get cleansed, like with Tio, Tayo, right? So, really, really cool. Uh, S3 attacks an enemy and has a 100% chance to steal all buffs from the target increases damage proportion to the caster speed. So here we have uh, ultimate, which has a 4 turn cooldown. It deals really really good single target DPS in arena. I didn't test it for regular stuff. Um, stealing all buff is a problem from, <laughs> from my point of view. Um, because Stella is very fragile. So you you are already happy if you get 2 turns with her out and her revenge. Then you are like, looks like happy. And she can rarely use the buffs. And the problem is, stealing buffs also counts towards take, um, debuffing the enemy, which means you will again trigger her, Demiurge, Stella, or Tio. Yeah, so the ultimate is not really good, but for what she is planned to do in Arena, she is, it's really good because you can reliably kill the main DPS, the main cleaver from the enemy team. So now to chain passive. 
Um, after attacking, recall the castles and the next skill chain castles action points by 25. It's a companion effect, so basically you want to not put her as a finisher of course, but it gives 25 action points to her. So she has a burst 1, she has a S1 with a burst effect, so action points actually makes a lot of sense on her. And also generating for others action points can be relevant. Now in PvP of course useless, but in PvE also it's it's like the other companion effects. Companion effects are not very strong, but they are always applied. So it's okay, it's nothing to <laughs> it's nothing to do uh, I don't know. I, I I wanted to say something funny but I, I'm not funny. So dual attack effect after attacking has a 80% chance to reduce the target's priority by 20%. So this is again really good, except for the fact that it, I'm not sure if dual attack triggers um, triggers debuff effects, but I would assume it will. And again, it's okay, nothing to speak of. Her transcendence gives her a ally team attack on four star, and another ally team attack on six star, which totals into ten percent attack, which is kind of mediocre. Like I would prefer quit damage or quit weight, but so we can see basically it's not a must you can already she already works wonderfully on three star but ideally you want on any unit four star at least for the chain passive weakness gouge and for the team buff so yeah not much to talk here not much to see Tellas exclusive equipment is called sidewinder or however <laughs> it, it increases the accuracy to dark by 30 and the passive effect is when using Unforgivable Sinner decreases the priority of the target by 30%. Unforgivable Sinner is the ultimate attack and now next to the stealing buff stuff you also now decrease the priority of the target heavily punishing a single target of the enemy. I think this is not a must have, she already works without it but it's a good plus, it's one of the more usable exclusive equipments. So if you have too many gifts and you want to have a fully full Stella just go for it. In terms of gear, we have multiple options for Stella. I think for PvP, her Thunder's Blade is the best option. Her S1 triggers debuffs, um, debuff punishments anyway, like these Stella and so on, so it can't get worse with applying debuffs on the enemy. So her Thunder's Blade gives a 50% chance to inflict burn for two turns when attacking a single target. I assume that it will be 100% on the highest. Great. So if you think about it, Stella's job is only to kill one target. Sometimes it fails, right? Having burn applied on the enemy can deal the last chunk of damage needed, and I think that's exactly what you want in this case. The other option, if you want to go for PvE, of course, she is a hunter and she can use the rampaging caracal or whatever weapon, and it with main stats attack of course and a 100% to inflict marked on the highest level, you can increase the total damage your team deals by 20% via mark. So as a few usable hunters in the game, this is definitely a weapon I will choose for PvE. The only set I think makes sense on Stella is speed set. Her attack scaling is not really good, so attack will definitely lose out on something, while her, she has one of the four highest speed in the game alongside Eliza, Sigma and Valentine. And it's just natural with a speed scaling skill set that you want to go for speed, right? And the problem with Stella is at my current gear scores, at the current, with the current gear I have, that I can't secure 100% quit chance while maintaining high speed to go before the enemy turn. Keep in mind that you want at least 280 speed on her. For me it's marginally lower, but I will showcase her soon with other units, that's why I don't have the best gear on her, but good enough to be one of the first turns. And you can really feel the attack being not scaling really really well, right? With only 2700 attack, it, I could go higher, but because her attack being basically 30, uh, 25, 20% 20 lower than for, for example Air or Noah or Win and so on, it's definitely a wiser choice to focus not on attack but on speed. In terms of charms in PvP, you want to avoid the adventurous element charms, because as a light unit, you will not face many dark units in the current stage of PvP. That means that stuff like Tactic and Charm is kinda useless. 
It might be more useful if we get more heroes introduced, but for now, not a good option. If you think about other options she could take for generating AP, when killing an enemy, action points are generated with the Undertaker's charm could be viable. Mage charm is not viable because she has only a, a she only generates um, all enemy attack on S1 with burst. So actually she is one of the worst talisman, talisman users that you can get. I think um, Wengard's charm, it's unlikely that she will survive, but in terms of AP generation, it's the most reliable one in this case. For, PvP, for PvE, Again, um, the, the adventurous element stuff can be relevant of many of the side bosses where dark elements in the past in good weight. So this can be really, really useful. But of course, you want to generate chain points properly. So just go for the dice. We all love the dice. Or just go for Sage Charm. Sage Charm, Sage Charm. There is the beautiful Sage Charm. So one of the units where Talisman where you really a bit narrowed down in terms of talismans, especially because she is not really long living in PvP. And for PvE, um, chain point generation, it's basic Sage Charm or World Charm. Okay, let's do the testing in Arena. So in Arena, Stella's main um, focus is on dealing with the main threat of the enemy team. Keep in mind that this Stella has a 50% damage reduction against single target attacks on her. So definitely we want to get rid of Noah before the other rest of the team can become a problem. Now, if I look at the enemy team, I will probably play something different, but because it's a stellar showcase, I'm going to try to use her. Okay, wish me good luck. So, regular Cindy buff. And my Stella goes for the enemy, um, Cindy. So I kind of want to test the water right now. How far I can go here? Is it wise to go for someone else? I kind of want to attack Leo so he definitely dies. Let's try to test it out. Um, so we got 8,900 damage now. And hopefully it's enough to get at least rid of Le Le Leo. Not sure if it was the right target, Nua could be better. If I had a better win, my win would kill Nua anyway. But this is in this time not the case. Sadly, I also get um, attack from Zing. I will use all my units here, except for D-Stella. So I have to hope that uh, my D-Stella is enough to deal with the rest of the team. And that's basically um, Stellar Shop, the regular Stellar Shop. Deal with the threats that could make you lose the fight. And now we go for this. And it worked out. Wonderful. So you can see, thanks to Stellar's um, high single target DPS and high speed, I was able to destroy Leo before he could become meaningful in the fight. And thus I won. Yeah, that was better than expected. <laughs> so we do a few more. Um, I plan to do at least three arena attacks. This one, Parameter, has Veronica, Leo, Di Stella, and Theo. This looks very hard to deal with, not gonna lie. At least with um, Stella in the team. We will still do it anyway. I mean, problem is, I would have to do the same again, but my Di Stella can't beat Veronica. So, sadly, this is not an option, the upper one. In the bottom one, I could deal with Veronica, and then um, Distella is all that's left, and we get a showdown. But in the upper one, um, with the cleave team, and I'm too lazy to switch gear now, I will just go and fight the middle one, even though I prefer to attack the top one, but not with Stella and the team. Okay, and Cindy goes first. I assume Stella goes second. No, the enemy Cindy first, but that doesn't matter. Oh, it matters actually badly because now I have to. Um, I will trigger the Stella when I use um, the Stella. But in this case, anyway, Win goes first. Let's see if we can get rid of a few units here already. Okay, the damage seems to be high. That's nice. We killed no one. And I actually want to kill Veronica. The problem is, what do I do? 
I think normally I would go for the S3, but I hope that my the high speed is probably Cindy. It means if I go for Taiwo, I will at the same time deal with Cindy. Hmm, I could go for D Stella and would also kill Cindy, but then I have to deal with Veronica. This is complicated. Science. <laughs> I will definitely go for the S1 because in this in this case I can deal with two units and get rid of them before they can do anything else. Voila. And now we will discuss all will probably kill everyone except the Stella and win. Stella herself is very very fragile, so I don't expect her to survive. Oh she survived. We get two revenges of one from D Stella, one from Wailer Stella. Wonderful. Yeah, and my low crit rate here comes to shine. But now we have to deal with Rubonica Tio, and many of you guys know how hard to deal, how hard it can be. So let's go. And I will increase the buff duration of my team. And now, go for the ultimate. Yeah, this looks wonderful. This should be an auto win. <laughs> Our main protagonist died in this arena fight, but never mind. And again, here. Wonderful. What? How dare you? What? No way. Okay, okay. Atio is so annoying. So again, um, Stella did her job by getting rid of possible enemies, right? And yeah, a really, really wonderful cleaver, actually. I really, really like to use her. The top team now looks kind of hardcore, not gonna lie. Looks very, very tanky. I could get rid of Leo. If I get rid of Leo, Mane will revive her. Um, if I get rid of Mane, I will still have to deal with one turn invulnerability. So Stella is in this case again not a really good choice. And what do I do? Well, I could I could go mana myself, but I just up I just um, remove stuff from mana. But yeah, do I want to switch stuff? I think if I switch stuff, it makes no sense with Stella and the team, so I will just keep going. So this time we will face a tanky team in which Stella does not really shine. <clears throat> and for some reason my win goes first, even, cause, um, even though my Cindy is faster. faster. <clears throat> and because of that I miss a lot of units. Okay. <clears throat> And Leo will be before Stella? No way, right? That's crazy. How far? Okay, my Stella is 279 and his Leo goes first. I, I sometimes don't get how speed is calculated in this game, but there's not much I can change now. So I will just attack. Of course I trigger um, the Stella. <laughs> yeah, guys. Um, yeah, RNG in this game, even with the speed, I have no words because at least we would have been able to kill Mene and now I'm totally lost and yeah I don't know how big the speed energy is so Wind survives but there's no way I will just use S2 and then leave seeing how much damage potentially ah yeah dead or can I? There's no way I can, right? There's no way I can. No, there's no way. Or is my Stella better than your Stella? If she will quit uh, counter, I mean. Imagine, imagine countering. Imagine countering. So, do we counter now? No! Okay, okay, okay. I, I've seen enough. Oh, this was super unlucky. This was absolutely winnable. But RNG is RNG. And yeah, the best we can do is move on. 
Oh, I will do a last fight. I will not refresh my arena tickets here. And yeah, let's let's attack the top one. Not sure how it will end, but we will find out. We just want to see Stella in action, right? I'm not gonna overthink and gear stuff now and switch stuff. I will just show you a uh, cleave footage with the Stella anchor. And here again, um, Stella going first. Like the randomness, you can really see it's a randomness, right? And I think. I think I want to deal with Veronica first. So let's focus on Veronica. It's a crit. It's 6000 damage. Okay, great. Cindy buff going up. And then let's hope that we can quit Veronica out of the game. And if not, that at least the Stella can finish the job. Ouch. So Veronica is definitely dead. But so is my main DPS. And now I will sadly trigger um, the Stella. But she's already very low. Oh, it's not. It didn't trigger. Nice. So now I will trigger her counter attack, of course, and my Cindy will die. But I have more buff duration on my rest of the units. Of course, counter attack. I did not expect anything else. And yeah, that's beautiful. And now, um, how do you deal with two Stellas, my friend? My my wife was better than your wife. Bam 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 miss, I don't care. <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah, three out of four fights one, I think. Or was it two two? I don't know. But in any case, yeah. That's the arena showcase for today. For the Stella. So that's it for the showcase of Stella today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the videos coming up like this. Please leave a subscribe and a like. I really, really am grateful for it. And I really enjoy growing my channel. And yeah, I hope you liked Stella. I hope you get her. It's very hard to get her. But in any case, I see you guys in outer plane. Have a good one.